man. <clears throat> I just like to share one of my old songs. How many love the old hymns? Now they they kind of rearranged <coughs> this, the script of the uh, songs today. If you don't listen very close, you can't much recognize them. But this is one song, amen, that we was going to sing this morning, but we kind of lost time, amen. <coughs> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and i love that old cross where the saviors and best for a world of law sinner world slain so i cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I love the last stanza. To the old rugged cross. I will ever be true. Is shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where is glory forever. I'll share, so I cherish the old rugged cross, till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen. Someday we're going to change that old rugged cross for a crown. And that's the reason why that you and I can't afford to give up in this time because because all these light afflictions working for us some more exceeding great eternal reward amen we just came from church amen we over my uh, cousin's church amen he had my cousin in from from davis california and i'll tell you that young man really sang him and my daughter amen mary he and mary really did sing amen and um i spoke to um uh, to my cousin, amen, uh, hoping that we can have him come on a Sunday night and just have a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost uh, service, amen? And uh, now, he's anointed. He sings with uh, Noah Jones. How many know Noah Jones? Bishop Noah Jones? Well, he's a part of Bishop Noah Jones' church. Amen. He's one of the leaders for his choir. Amen. And uh, he just joined about, I guess, about seven, eight years ago. He used to have his own church. 
in Davis, California there. We went down and visited him. We, we spoke at his church, and, and um, so we didn't know he was our cousin until he came here to Poland. And matter of fact, when I was pastoring, he came and preached at our church, amen. And so ever since then, we've been having fellowship, amen. And so I thought it would be so nice to have him come, amen, to be with us on a Sunday night, amen. And just, I mean, just have a one-night, a one-night revival, just a one-night revival, amen. Just a one-night revival, amen. Now, like I said, He's a pastor, he's a bishop, amen, and he is anointed to sing the word, the God, the songs of the Lord, amen. And so, uh, matter of fact, as far as we know, we're the only two bishops in the Minneweather family, amen. And then what I just learned this afternoon, we both have the same testimony. He was a stutterer, and so was I, amen. He stuttered all his life, and and God saved him and cleared his speech up. Amen. Same thing happened to me. God saved me and cleared my speech up and took a start in a way. And now God has consecrated him as a bishop. So we are the only two, as I know of, in the many others family, amen, that are left as bishops. Amen. And I tell you, it, 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 it blesses my heart that God has allowed me to live, um, live, outlive most of my family. Amen. I'm, I was looking at my cousin this afternoon. We are about the only two left, Queenie and I. We are about the only two left. Amen. But God is still holding us here for a reason. Amen. And, um, and you know, and the Lord is, he's fulfilling his word in my life. Uh, the scripture said, the prophecy prophesied to us years ago, my wife and I, and said to me, he said, your latter days shall be greater than your former. And I'll tell you, we have been living in some exciting times, amen, in my life these years, amen. And so I, I thank God. And, and let me say this before we give it to Ella Pulley. You know, what, to obey God is one of the greatest challenges that an individual can, can do is obey God. Because obeying God is not easy. But I'll tell you one thing, if you obey him, you never will regret it. You never would regret it. And let me say this. As you live for God and build your relationship with God, God will not let anything slip up on you. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God will not let anything slip up on you. And he'll, and he'll reveal people to you. You don't have to try to search and find out who people are. God will reveal people to you. Amen? I, I constantly tell Dr. Nate and him and him and I, when him and I talk, I said, Dr. Nader, I said, God don't hide anything from me. He always let me know what's around me. Amen. You know why? Because I seek him. I seek him. Amen. He is my savior, and plus he's my friend. Amen. He's my king. He's my Lord. And uh, amen. He's my joy keeper, and he's my everything. He's the, he's, the, he's the love of my soul. I remember I used to sing that song all the time when I was a young Christian, Jesus, the lover of my soul. I'll be running and rejoicing, amen. I never got tired. I'll be running for miles and miles and miles and never got tired, Ella Pulley. Never gave out a breath. I used to run from the Lord Center clear over on 10th and Beach and never get tired. Amen. Now, you know why I ran? Because I wanted to be in the revival. We was having revival at our church, and I, got, I, was, I would get off work about 8-something, and, and, and uh, I knew... Uh, I knew the revival was in process, and, and so I wanted to hear the preacher preach the gospel. And so when I, when I clock out at a lab from Aladdin restaurant, I would clock out running. My God, you talking about running? I would run. <laughs> every night, I would run every night. When I get there, they'll put in the service, just be turning out. I said, I'm not going to give up. So I kept running. And finally, one night, I made it. I made it before they turned the service out. Amen? But I will run and quote scriptures and rejoice in the Lord. He maketh my feet like hind. Amen? I will run and not be weary. And so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just rejoicing tonight because I know, I know the Lord is my Savior. I haven't, I haven't got tired yet. Amen? And I thank God for who he is. And it's my pleasure. 
Now, the purpose of this service is to grow our, our young uh, leaders. That's the purpose of this service. Because one day, we want to see you, amen, climb your mountain. We want to see you cross your valley to that ministry that God has waiting on you. Because there's a field that God has waiting on each one of you. Amen. So that's our purpose here tonight, is to help you to gain boldness, a confidence, so when you stand in that place where God's going to position you, you'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. Amen. And, and uh, so I know this, you know, see, like I was saying this morning, I wasn't supposed to preach this morning. Uh-uh, no, I wasn't supposed to preach this morning. But God had, uh, he had warned me up in the week. And, but I never push things. I always just wait. Be patient. Just be patient. And I waited. And so when we tried to get Ella, 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 Ella Fellas to preach, Ella, Ella Fellas backed out. And uh, so we had one more left, one more left. And we were saving Ella Pullen, amen, to last. We would get him down the road, amen. And so, uh, so uh, the pastor and I was talking as well. Uh, he said, well, let's, let's let Ella Gant go for it. I said, okay, that's fine. Let's do it. And uh, so yesterday evening, Ella Gant, amen, he called me and he couldn't make it. He said, Bishop, the load done fell back on you, amen. So I called Ella Pullen. I said, Ella Pullen, we got it. The Lord is on us today. Amen? And so we are a team. We are a team. Amen. We are a team. And so uh, we know COVID is, is, is rapidly uh, escalating, so we want you to be careful. I want you to be careful as you're embracing one another. Amen. If you, if you find yourself snuffling and, and carrying on, it, like we said, it's best to stay at home. Amen. It's best to stay at home. But, but COVID is, is, is uh, gradually escalating among us. Amen. Now, the mask is not, the ma is not uh, recommended right now, but if you feel like you want to wear a mask, that's, certain, that's certainly all right with, with us. Amen. We're not going to condemn you and say you ain't got no faith. You know what I mean? People say, you see, wear a faith. You ain't got no faith. No, that's not. No. Uh -uh. You're, being you're being cautious, right? You're being cautious. Amen. So, so it is my pleasure, amen, to turn this part of service in the hand. And let's say amen for Ella Collins. Ella Collins again to be faithful with us, amen. So we thank God for Ella Collins and, and all of you that are here tonight. So let's say amen for Ella Pullen. Come on, Ella Pullen. Amen. amen. God bless you, Bishop. Say amen for Bishop. Come on, Zion. Say amen for Bishop. Amen. 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 We're truly glad to be in the house on this evening. Um, we're not going to prolong it. It's good to, it's good to see everybody. Good to be in the house. Amen. As um, y'all heard him say, um, yeah, yeah, we often get so wrapped up in holiness that we forget that, you know, uh, God gives us five senses and a brain, too. You know, so, yeah, I agree. If you want to wear your mask, wear your mask. That's what your brain is telling you to do. That's what your brain is telling you to do. Listen, um, I'm going to read our evening scripture. It's just coming from Psalms 1, chapter 1. I'm going to read all six verses. All six verses. I don't know why I always have stopped at verse three or four, but tonight we're going to read all six. We're going to read all six tonight. And, um, we're going to have to let the Lord have his way. Amen. Amen. We have some awesome speakers tonight. We have some awesome speakers tonight. If um, And if, if the Lord gives you a word, don't be afraid to let Bishop or myself know. Don't be afraid to let us know. All right? We want to um, let our new ministers and we want to let them go forth. We want to hear what the Lord has spoke to them all. Listen to what Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 says through 6. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also shall not wither, and whosoever, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. 
Now the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Verse 6, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers and doers of his word. You may be seated. Amen. How many of us want to be righteous? How many of us find joy in being righteous? Amen. Amen. It's a joy to be right, to be right. And I ain't talking about always, I ain't talking about right and wrong. I'm talking about being on the righteous side and doing what God wants you to do the way God wants you to do it. Amen. 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 Let's go into some praise and worship. Amen. We want to ask um, our own sister Mary come. Amen. I'm going to say Minister Mary. But we're going to ask her to come as she renders some songs. And let's get with her. Amen. 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 If we could just stand to our feet <clears throat> at, at this time. Lord, we just thank you just for this moment. And we just thank you just for your presence that is here with us tonight. For this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made. This is, this is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is a day. This is a day that the Lord has made. Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, there is power. Power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, 
power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood oh, of the Lamb. Oh, there is power. Power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is a day. This is a day that the Lord has made. And if you believe that, come on and worship him. Come on. Worship the Lord. He's so good. He's so kind. He's been so faithful. He's been so merciful. We owe him all the glory and all the praise. Come on and lift him up. Come on and lift up his name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, you Lord. Come on and thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You, Lord, I just want, I just want to thank you, Lord, oh, for loving me, for loving me when I didn't love myself, for loving me, oh, for loving, loving me, I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on and thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, have your way. Thank you, Lord. I just want... I just want to thank you, Lord. And that's why I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Yes, I worship and adore you. 
Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than in Jesus. Oh, Jesus. At the mention of your name, every knee shall bow, every tongue proclaim. Jesus. Jesus, you are Savior, you are Lord, and you are Jesus, Jesus, have the mention of your name, every knee should bow, every tongue proclaim, Jesus, Jesus, you are Savior, you are Lord, and you are, you're the only living God, you're the only living God, say you're the only living God, you say you are. You're the only living God, say you're the only living God, you're the only living God, say you're the only living God, you say you're the only living God, oh you're the only righteous God, you say you're the only righteous God. You're the only righteous God. You're the only righteous God. And we love you, we love you, we love you. 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 We love you, say you're the only living God. You say you're the Oh, you're the only living God. You say you're Oh, you're the only righteous God. You say Oh, you're the only righteous God, say. Oh, we love you. 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 Yeah, 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 say Jesus, Jesus, at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow, every tongue proclaim, Jesus, Jesus. You are Savior, you are Lord, and you are God. Hallelujah. Come on and lift him up. Yes, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Don't you feel a little better? 
Amen, amen. Truly, God is that good. God is just that good. God is just that good. We thank you for his spirit in the house. Amen, amen. Let me ask this question. Do we have any testimonies in the house? I'd like to get at least two. At least two. First um, honors I give to God, who is ahead of my life, who I love more than anything in this world. Um, I can say that um, God has been good. And um, in April, uh, I know this sound, might sound crazy to some people, but I didn't like my job, right? I didn't like my job. I got up every morning, and I traveled about 35 minutes, and I went to work, and I just, I didn't like my job, but I liked to pay. So I'm going to say I took a job because it paid real good, right? I took a job because I felt like, oh, I can, it paid me enough to do the things that I wanted to do, right? But I didn't like it. And actually it was, I have been doing pension administration for, um, I don't know, 20 some years and I don't like it, right? But I, I it always paid good. So I took another job. I had been off two years. Let me go back. I had been off two years. God had blessed me, and I asked for two years off, right? I said, God, I need two years off. He gave me two years off. So I left my first job, and then I told God, I said, God, I need a job, and I need a uh, job, and I need a paycheck on uh, January 15th. So I got hired 1-1, one, one, and I got my paycheck on January 15th. So move, that's the favor of God, right? So I, I take a job that I don't like. And so one day after a year there, I just, I go to my supervisor and I was like, look, the stress I can't do. And so, um, you know, I don't think I want to do this anymore. So anyways, I left and I've been off since um, April 14th, uh, April 12th. And um, it's funny because I got a job that I didn't interview for, right? Um, I told a friend that I was looking for a job, and his manager, one of his um, colleagues, called me and said, hey, I got a job I think would be good for you, and I got a job. <laughs> so now I'm, I am a government uh, official. I work for the city of Portland. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you how good it is. I make $8,000 more than I made on the other job that I had. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm excited because this is something totally, it ain't pension administration. But what I'm saying is that when I walked off of this job, I had no idea. And I remember Pastor Hardy used to always say, don't you leave no job if you don't have another job. But when I left I, on the way home in my long drive from Lake Oswego, I said, God, I need your help. I don't know what this means, and I don't know what this this looked like, but I'm going to trust you in the process. And let me tell you, I put in a lot of job applications, and when my email came, it said no, no, no. Jobs I knew I was qualified for, it said no. I interviewed, it said no. And I remember the last one, that the job that I really wanted, it said no, and I said, God, then you know where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do, right? I work for the city of Portland. Y'all keep me in your prayers. But I know this time I won't not like the job and walk off <laughs> because I know that God gave, this, gave me this job. Amen. 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 Do we have another? I'd like to give honor to God and Bishop and Mother. Bishop, I just want to tell you, you know what, I'm glad. God got you here for a reason. I'm glad you're here because I need to see you. I really do. I need to see you. My grandmother, we don't have no elders in my family. We're the elders. And so when I was, I got saved when I was 20, but it was so over my head that it just didn't work. It wasn't nothing to do with God, but it was me. And so when I really came to the Lord and got serious, I didn't have no family members. None of the saved family members were there. And I know what old Zion looked like. I knew what it looked like. I knew what it was supposed to be. 
and this is it right here. And so I thank God for Bishop and Mother because I need to see them. And I tell Mother all the time how such a blessing she is to me. Because, you know, when you're trying to walk right with God, Bishop said something earlier. It's not easy living for God. It's not easy when you're coming out of that world because what you know is the world. And you don't know holiness. and You don't know God's standards. And you don't know his principles and all that. And when you come in, it, it's over your head. And you really can't deal with it. But me and my sister both say how blessed we are because we saw it. We didn't understand it because my grandmother was one of the church mothers and they did the holy convocation. They did all that. And so we saw prayer warriors. We saw what God could do, but we didn't think he could do it through us because we was little wild kids, as they would say. But I thank God for having seasoned people in the house to be able to look at them because you guys helped me with my walk. And it's like when you... When people come in here and they don't know nothing about being saved, the same way I look to these guys, people are going to look to us because they're looking for a role model. They're looking for an example. They won't tell you that, but they're looking for somebody who looks like they know what they're doing and who look like they know where they're going. And so I thank God for you guys in my life because you guys are helping me stay on the right path. And I'm trusting God and believing God and living for God the best I can. So I could be that example for the person that comes in. This is what this is all about. And so I just thank God for being saved. But I really thank God for these two right here. Because like I said, me and my sister, we're the elders. And I'll be 63. And so to think you're the elder and you're only 63. My sister's 65. It usually be 70 and 80. And somebody's 90. But we're down to us. And it's like, but I thank God we could be doing anything. But I have myself right here, hid in this body of Christ. And I thank God I'm serious. I am so serious. You guys pray for me. I am so serious. When we sing that song today that Jesus, my everything, he really is my everything. And I'm getting ready to sit down. But God blessed me with a husband this year. And the Lord has been showing me stuff. Because in our marriage counseling, he told Pastor Nayland I was stubborn. And I was like, I ain't stubborn. But you know what? I discovered when it comes to the things of God, yes, I am. Because God is all I have. And I will not back up off my standards. I cannot back up. It's like I can work with you anywhere. But when it comes to God, I got to stand my ground. And that's what the Lord showed me. That it's not so much stubborn as you know where you are. And you have to take your stand. And in things, when it comes to things of God, I have to take my stand. It's the same way at work. It's just, it is what it is. And so I just thank God for having that in me. I don't know where he's going to take me and how he's going to use me. But I'm so excited about that. That's my, my motivation. I got to do for God. Because, you know, he, he trusts us. He trusts us. I went out and seen some stuff and ventured and all that and didn't think I was good enough to do nothing for God. But the Lord later showed me, I let you go do all that because I could trust you. Because I knew you would come back to me and you would come back to the house of God. And you don't have no shame in you. And you would tell these people everything that the enemy would do to try to destroy them. So you guys pray for me that I keep moving. Because I'm going to keep moving. But that I stay planted and that my spirit will stay sensitive to God. That I will forever hear him and be able to do what it is he's calling me to do. Amen. 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 Let me piggyback just a little bit. Yeah. Um, what you were saying about Bishop Miniweather, he, him and First Lady Miniweather is a big part of my ministry as well. Huge part of my ministry. Goes way back from when I first got to Portland. He was one of my teachers. And, and coming up, he was on the board when I got ordained. I mean, he has nothing but the desire to see young ministers grow he wants to see young ministers grow that's a blessing y'all that is a blessing because most people want to see themselves grow but when they get to the place where you know eh, i don't know why he walk around with the bible he know every scripture in there <laughs> You know, it's just, it's just, y'all see him flowing this morning? I mean, 
man, I was impressed with just his delivery. His delivery is it was it was like I don't know. God has him on another level right now. So we appreciate you. Just all I can say is enjoy the ride and just let him keep using you. Just let him keep using you. Hey man, listen, 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 listen. We have some speakers who want to come forth. Hey man, we appreciate the testimonies. And uh, um I want to bring up this young man who's um I just like the way the Lord uses his mind. The Lord uses his mindset. He's not, he don't have the average mindset. So you have to pay attention to him. But um, you, you can see the Lord working in him. You can see the Lord speaking through him. Amen. So at this time, I want to bring up Minister Darius Miniweather. At this time, let's receive him with a good God bless you. Thank you. God bless. How's it going, everyone? It's good to be in the house of God today. Thank you, Elder Pullins. Um, Always thankful for Bishop. That's my grandpa. And, you know, he's seen me grow up naturally since birth. But for him to just be always patient with me and uh, just be like, remind me of what God is saying. Remind me of, like, the word of God and, like, what the direction is. It's always been a blessing. Um, thank you, Mary, for the word, for, for singing as well, too. Your, your song always ministers, especially to myself. And I never get tired of hearing you sing. So, please, drop the album. <laughs> um So today, uh, we're going, today is a topic um, that was actually brought up on, over the weekend. Um, it was a part of like a, a friend group or what have you, and they asked the question of, where do you see yourself growing with God? And where do, where's like the impact of where you are, you know, lacking essentially? And there are a couple, about 10 Ten stances or what have, or what have you, uh, like anger, resentment, things like that. But uh, mine was number six, and it was called um, doing the work for God versus being with God. And, yeah, so we're going to go in prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today, Lord. Uh, we thank you for, for, for traveling grace, Lord, that, that you've blessed us with, Lord. Please wash us and make us clean in your word, that we can hear your word in that, and that we can all grow together in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, yeah, the idea of doing work for God versus being with God, it's like this. When all flesh, God is a God of all flesh, right? All flesh works for God in some shape, form, or capacity. So even for a non-believer to give money to the homeless person, that is still going to be the work for God, essentially in the, in the long-term run of things. Uh, for people that, that, that we have to be a witness, uh, that, that we're witnessing, we're still doing the work for God, even if they don't perceive it or, 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 or what have you. So, uh, yeah, all... Literally, everybody on the face of the planet does the work for God in some shape or form because he's a God of balance. And so um, just as an example, if we go to the book of uh, Revelation chapter 17, uh, verse 17, it shows that God put it in, in the will of all, of all the kingdoms of the world to fulfill his will and to, give his, and to, give, to have those kingdoms give their power unto the beast system. And so... Um, it's everything always works for God, even though it may look a little bit dark on, on our path. And so the idea of just doing the work for God, anybody can do that. We, we, we establish that. But when you're being with God, especially as a believer, you start to recognize that Christ has called you to the joint airship, that he's not going to leave you in the dark of anything. He's always going to guide you. He's going to be your shepherd, which is why we say, my sheep hear my voice. See, so when, we, when we're being with God, he's always drawing us close to him, no matter where we're at in our life. Whereas if you're just doing the work for God, you can be lost, completely lost, but never know who he truly is. And so that's why we call ourselves the, the sons and daughters. That's why we're called to the adoption, to be called the sons and daughters of the living God. Uh, because let's, let's use this example. Uh, the Pharisees, um, they believed that they were truly doing the work for God, even though their heart was completely against them. 
And so they thought that they were doing the baptisms, all the services, laying on of hands and things of that nature, but their mindset was completely against them. That's why Jesus proposed to them and said um, that whoever does sin is a servant of sin. And whoever removes himself from sin becomes, in, becomes a, a son of God, and they shall abide in the house forever. So when we remove ourselves from the idea and repent naturally, when we repent and turn from our ways and, and have God work on our hearts, he shows us that, that we're called to the adoption. And that's why we call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. And so the process of continuing and abiding that way, we can read that in, in John chapter 14. Can we please turn to that? John chapter 14, starting at verse 21. Okay, say amen when you get there. All righty. So it says it right here. Um, Jesus says, he that hath my commandments and keeps them, he is, he is it that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He will make himself known to him, to us when we have faith naturally and when we keep his commandments. And Judas said unto him, not Iscariot. But Judas said unto him, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said, if a man love me, he will do my words, and my father will love him, and he will come unto him and make our abode with him. We will become one, that joint heirship, becoming known as a son or daughter of God. We will will be in that environment. Verse 24 he that loves me and keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not of mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and shall bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, and my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I, not as the world gives, I give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's why we always say God will never leave us nor forsake us. He, he's the God of light and not of darkness. Anything that happens in the world, he will prepare us for it. So then we walk into it, we're already in, in strength. We're not, we're not in a... Um, uh, a, a, be, a state of bewilderment. God always reveals things to his servants, to his sons and to his daughters. So because the Lord is nearing his appearance, and I think that we all recognize that, uh, we see how, for instance, if you go into Whole Foods, uh, you can pay literally with your palm, and we all know what that essentially is going to represent in the long run. Uh, that that would be essentially the mark of the beast. And, but that's like the the pro, that's the, that's like the, the, the pre-release of it. So the, this, the, the world, the, the, this world system is preparing the entire world to walk into something. But it's doing it very, very gradually. And if we're the sheep of God, we should be hearing his voice and, and be prepared for our deliverance. Because at some point, God's going to say, come up out of here, my people. Be not partaker of her sins. Do not be partaker of her sins. So you do not receive her plagues. So God is showing us that there's a difference between his ways in the world system. And at, at some point, we as just believers, I would love for us to talk more about it because that way it removes the fear of, of the environment, you know? Because, like, we understand that that the word is already written that, that through Christ we have the victory of everlasting life. And so the, there's no bad thing that's going to happen to us because we believe in him. And so, but the reason why God says, come up out of here, my people, be not partakers of her sins, is because uh, that, that land is called Mystery Babylon. But the spirit behind that is, what, um, is what's shown in the parable of, like, the separation of the sheep and the goats. So the sheep are, they, they the, the nature of a sheep is this. They follow after the, the ram, the, the leader, the, the, the head of the sheep, um, which naturally for us, that would be Christ. And they, they, they free willingly do that. 
But then the goats, on the other hand, they abide by what's called the queen, the queen goat. And so when God is, when Christ is saying that he's separating the sheep from the goats, he's also not just talking about like the, the, the nature of people, but he's also talking about the spirit of what's inside of an individual. The people that follow Christ are the sheep, but the people that follow, follow the world system, they're likened unto the goats because they follow the, the queen goat, essentially. And yeah, and so we see a lot of that nature taking place, not just in the world, but in, within the church system as well, too, within just a lot, of, a lot of things. And there's a lot of paganism that's walked and crept itself, as the Bible says, as Christ says, that tares are sold amongst the wheat. Uh, that it, that line gets blurred, just like in the Old Testament, how you had, even though the children of Israel, they were called to, to follow God, there was still paganism within from the other nations that then they adopted themselves, and then they called that holy praise. But God was not, you know, he wasn't loving that, so he put them into captivity, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so this world system is governed by uh, what's called in the Old Testament is simply called the Queen of Heaven. And that's where in the New Testament, we know that as Mystery Babylon, the mother of all harlots. Um, and the, the, the reflection of, the parallel rather, of God having, having the, the, the idea of God the Father the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. The enemy tries to reflect and mimic the same instance. But this time, he does it through uh, him naturally as a head. But then you have his false version of the Holy Spirit. And then you have his, his Messiah, essentially, which the world goes after. That Messiah was born on December 25th, by the way. He, the, Jesus wasn't born on, on December 25th, but the world goes after him. Even an atheist will keep Christmas, you see. But... We're not called to do those, those, those certain types of things because it represents what the false system is, what false praise is, and so on and so forth. And so, yeah, the, um, the queen of heaven is shown all throughout the, throughout the Bible, from the beginning of the book until the end. And, yeah, we just, God just wants us to discern what are we what are we giving our strength to? What are we giving our, our mind and our heart to? Because God is looking for those that, that, that live with a pure and a clean mind, a pure and a clean heart, that, that really, when he, when he calls us, we go, and we follow and keep his ways. But the enemy has, under, the enemy understands that, and so he has waged war on the saints. So if we go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, we can see what the exact war is. Because a lot of the time we're taught to put on the whole armor of God. A lot of the time we're taught that Satan is walking like a worn lion, lion seeking who may devour and all these different ideas. But then what is the war that we're living in? And then another one, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rules in dark places. But what is he actually after? So this verse right here tells us exactly what he's after. So let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. It says it right here. Um, the dragon was wroth with the woman. Uh, well, okay, in context. So this chapter, all together, uh, Revelation, th this chapter right here, in a storytelling way, uh, retells of the life of Christ. He's a, when you read this chapter, it talks about the man-child. And it talks about the woman cloaked with the sun with, with 12 stars around her. The woman cloaked with the sun is the nation of Israel. And the 12 stars are the 12 tribes of Israel. And the man-child that to be delivered is Jesus. And so that entire story, uh, this entire chapter just breaks that down in just another, in a storytelling way, because God, you know, he loves literary devices and things of that nature. And so when it talks about the dragon that was wroth with the woman, it was talking about Rome, particularly with Herod. Because remember, um, when Jesus was, uh, was, was, was about to be born, it was the, the, the children of Israel said that, wow, our king is about to be born, things of that nature. And so Herod waged war and, and, um, and decided to, to kill off all the babies of that time period. And so the, the woman fled into the wilderness for a space of, I believe it says, 1,260 days. That's three and a half years, which is when Jesus went into Egypt for that time period. And so, let's, but let's go back down to the very last verse. Because, yeah, let's skip all that. So let's go to the very last verse. I can talk about that all day. And so um, 
But it says right here that the dragon was wroth with the woman, meaning Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's the war that the enemy has been after from the beginning of time, even from the time of Adam. Remember Adam, he, he had faith in God. He believed in God, but the enemy went after his obedience to God and through that caused sin and caused all men to fall from there. So the beginning of time, the, the enemy is always after us. He knows that we're believers. He's not going to knock our faith. But the one thing that he likes to go for is us, our obedience to God and not keeping his commandments. The commandments, as we read in, um, in John chapter 14, when we love God and keep his commandments, Christ will manifest himself to us. And by his Holy Spirit, he will bring us into remembrance into all things. The, 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 the revealing of the word can be shown to us once we begin to keep the Lord's commandments and get out of like things like idolatry, covetousness, such as keeping up with the Joneses, things of that nature. Because God already has promises set up for us. See, by faith, we obtain a good report. And by faith, the elders have, have obtained promises, right? But if we, if we break, if we have something sitting in our heart that does not want to follow God and have that covetous way, that's when we, that's when we begin to fall. That's when we begin to stumble, find ourselves in a dark corner or things, things of that nature. It, getting, getting back into our vices, things of that nature. That's where the enemy wants us at. Because when we keep the commandments of God, there's eternal light shining within us. When we have faith in Christ, there's nothing that can, that can, that can penetrate us. So, yeah, that is the entire war that, that the enemy is after. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, I want to talk about, real quick before I close, about the about the, what the goats do in this world. Because we talked about the separation of the sheep and the goats. And we're the sheep, we're the flock of the Lord's pasture. And, but the goats, this is what they do. This is how they live. Even in entertainment, we constantly see uh, an ushering of being called the goat. You're the goat this, the goat that. Even um, with astrology, things of that nature. You know, it's, it's, that, it's that type of energy that the world is perpetuating into, into, uh, amongst us. Um, but the, there's a, the spirit, because remind you, uh, that the world system is, is likened into what's called mystery Babylon, the mother of all harlots. And so the, 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 the spirit behind that, one of the spirits of, of the name is called the Kundalini spirit. People that, that engage in yoga and things of that nature, it's engaging you into what's called the divine feminine, and that's not of God. The, the Holy Spirit is a masculine spirit. It's a spirit of truth. It guides you into the truth of all things. But the, the kundalini spirit is that of the goat spirit um, that represents mystery Babylon altogether. And when you look at how, when you look into the false church system and you, and you, Compare that to what happens into certain cultures that abide in like the Kundalini thing, like Hinduism and things like that. When the people that, the, the, the Hindus and stuff, when they lay hands on each other, it resembles what happens in the false churches. Literally, they, they start laughing, giggling, things of that nature. It, it is, it's remarkable. And that's, that's, a, that's a sign that, that the enemy is trying to show his signs into the world, into, into, into God's house. So it's just good, it's mindful for us to be paying attention to what kind of spirit that people are, are abiding by, especially those that, that come in the name of God and begin to lay hands on people. And you pay attention to the signs that, that do follow them. That's why when Jesus says when he returns, people are going to say, many people are going to say, Lord, Lord, did I not baptize? Did I not do these works? Did I not do these wondrous things in, in your name? And he said, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. The reason why is because, again, they did not keep God's commandments. They understood who Christ was. But one, they tried to lower him as if he was a prophet, right? They tried to say, like, uh, he was just a martyr or he's equal to, like, these religious systems out in the world. And, um, but he's not so. That's why, as you sung, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. All of them in, in heaven and, I mean, excuse me, in earth and in heaven. All these false gods are going to bow to God. They're going to bow to Christ and say that he is Lord, that he is king. And if we're made of that same spirit, we have to start, we have to continue 
to show that that level of discernment and continue to, 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 to walk in that, in that truth because the enemy, as we read, the war, he's waging war on us to not keep God's commandments. He removes things and tells us that things are, 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 don't exist anymore. But he does that simply so then our understanding of God, our relationship with God can be watered down. Yeah, and so um, we're going to land with we're going to land this plane with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and starting at verse 9. Cuz again, a lot of some uh, there's been Sometimes people say you don't know you don't know where God's going to take you and things of that nature, which to an extent can be true. And so, but we, but we use verses like this. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear have heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Let's read the next verse. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So if you can build that relationship with God, have faith in Christ, keep his commandments, he will begin to reveal to you, who you truly are, what your ministry is, what your walk is, and, and anything else in between. Let's continue to read. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak? Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit, which, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct them. But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Did we not enjoy Darius, Minister Darius? Amen. Amen. Well, he broke that down. He broke that down. Amen. Amen. Truly, yet yeah, God is, that's yeah, good. That's yeah, good. Let's give him one more good God bless you. Amen. 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 At this time, we had another, um, another powerhouse coming from Minister Sandra. Say amen as Minister Sandra come at this time. I want to ask, um, Elder Pullings, like, why in the world you let me go after him? Because my word is not, look, Darius, I was like, hey, let me go first. <laughs> well, good, um, good evening. Um, I am Minister Sandra Hobson. I, I like to say Minister Deaconess Sandra Hobson. Um, I came in on last Sunday, and Bishop asked me, he was like, hey, you I haven't seen you in a while. You should come speak. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to come speak. But I've had a, such a long week, and I had been, um, one of the things that I do a lot of the times is um, I put in my um, New Testament CD. Anybody still play CDs in their car? Well, I put my New Testament CD in. I had been listening to the scriptures, and uh, and I was like, okay, God, what would I speak about? So one of the things um, I, I thought about was speaking about the names of Jesus, right? And one of the names of Jesus Je is Jehovah Rapha. And um, first, let us pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, oh God, oh God, for who you are, oh God. Oh God, for being a God of peace, of love, oh God, for just looking over us, God. God, I pray right now that you would give me the words to say, oh God, that it would minister to your people, oh God. Oh God, take me out of it, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. And so I wrote out what 
Jehovah Jireh meant, and I wrote out what Jehovah Rapha meant, and then I wrote out what what Jehovah Shalom means, and I wrote out what Abba Father means. You know, I began to write this, and then I let fear set in, and then I ran up to Bishop today, and I was like, Bishop, I don't think I'm ready for that word, because there was a lot more in there that I wanted to dig into, but I didn't have time. But so I sat here and I thought about it and I was like, okay, God, what would you have me to say? Because the, when I come to you and I tell you what Abba Father means, I want to be able to explain to you what it means and what it, what, it, what it says in his word. But so I went and I changed my message, which I shouldn't. I should have stuck with my message. But one of the things that I, I thought about was one of my favorite scriptures and it, and, um, and it's Psalm 51, and it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. When I began to think of that's my favorite scripture, it's because there are some things that go on in our lives, right? And there's people in our lives and things that we do in our lives will kind of cloud our thoughts in the way things that we do, amen? And so I thought about a lot of the times that I get so busy I'm um, doing so much of everything, and um, and sometimes my spirit, and I get around some people, and, and my spirit gets a little, you know, get a little off, and I might not talk the way I should talk. I might not walk, and then sometimes I feel outside of myself, or what, what people say, I feel myself, right? So I always have to go back to God and say, hey, God, please forgive me, and so you have to, because even though I've been in God for a long time, sometimes I still need God to, for him to correct me in the things that I do and the things that I say and my actions because I am a person who uh, I take correction, but I like, to get, I like to get the last word of my correction, right? So when I think about when God said God created me, I, I think, go back, in a, back a long time ago when I got saved, and I remember... I was a, a young mother when I got saved, and um, and I have four girls, and I was raising my four girls. And you know, if you know about raising kids, it's not easy. You know, there's some needs and some wants and some things. And as a as uh, and we wanna we wanna give our we wanna give our um, we wanna give our kids. But one of the things I remember is when God came into my life. Amen. I. I was having a conversation with him. I wasn't living under the will of God. I was living my life. I was shacking. I, I was doing the worldly things. Uh, um, to be honest, I was, I don't know what the word to use, but I was a professional shoplifter, right? And I could do it very good. Right. And I, I did it for years, but I never wanted my kids to know I, I did it. But I remember one time when God, I was driving down the street and and he tugged on my shoulder and he said, will you trust me? Because I, I got saved and I know I wanted to live for God, but I I. I did this on the side, which took care of my kids, but I love God too. But I was struggling in the middle of, what is that called? What's that called? When you straddle the fence. I was straddling this fence, and I needed God to do some things in my life. And I had said yes to God. I said, God, for you I live, and I said, for you I die. But I said it because you hear it so much. It's just something like you say, hi, how are you? And they always say, I'm good. It was just something that I would say. And so I remember that time when I was driving down the street, and he said, will you trust me? And I said, so in my head, I'm saying, okay, God, you're asking me to trust you. You're, tell, you're saying that, but you're telling somebody that's new to you, that a person who always felt like I, I was the one who made things happen, that it wasn't God's mercy and grace that kept me out of the penitentiary when I had my hands on other people's stuff. See, I was that honest kind of thief, right? You can leave your purse there. I wouldn't steal from you. It was just the stores and stuff that I, I would go in and I would, I would touch their stuff. But I was like, God, I'm, I make so much money. I do so much here. What do I do on my income? So, but he spoke to me and said, will you trust me? 
And I sat there and I went through my head a little while and I said, yes, God, I will trust you. From that day forward, I be, God began to deal with me. I, I mean, I found my, myself in church every day. I found myself connected to the things that I needed in God, right? I needed, I went to Bible study, you know. I, I needed to be near the fire. I took my third row. I didn't care how packed the church was. I needed, there was something that God had that I needed. It was his word. It was his promise. It was the things that I needed to hear from God. And when God opened the door, because when he said, will you trust me? I kind of stepped out on faith, that little mustard seed faith. Because when I, I, I said yes to God, I was like, okay, God, this is what I need from you. Now, I don't know if anyone tells God what they need from him, right? I'm the kind of person I tell God what I need. And so I said, God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me to walk right. I need you to help me to talk right. I need to help you to help me evict my boyfriend. Because I said yes to you because you asked me what I trust you. And so I was going to say, God, okay, I'm going to cast everything. So now I'm not only giving you my finances, my hustle. I'm giving you my boyfriend. I'm giving you my life. I mean, God, whatever you want me to do, I will do it. So as I began to walk with Christ, God began to reveal and open the doors and, and show me who he was, right? I started... I started as I walked with Christ, he began to give me revelation on things. After the eviction, let me tell you how, how, how cold God is, right? How good he is. When I went to go evict my boyfriend, I said, God, what do I say? Because I know I, ha I can't live because I said yes to you, right? So how do I evict him? <laughs> and I rolled over one night and I said, hey, we need to talk. And his words that came out of his mouth was, I know, I got to move at the end of the month. Is not God good? I didn't have to see any. That's because God had a plan for me. It wasn't my plan. It was his plan. He was going to open some doors. He was going to move some things. He was going to position me. You know, God is... As I became more faithful, God, God began to open the doors for my children. He began to open doors for my family. He, he allowed me to purchase a home, right? My home was set up as I, they always call me by the book Betty. That's what they thought because they didn't know that. But when I opened my home, it was an opportunity where they knew that only thing played on my radio was gospel. We only, at my house, we talked about God. At my house was prayer. At my, my family knew on these days of the year that we were going to come together because that's where they were probably only going to get their church is from my house. God is, God is slick, right? God opened doors. He opened the door. He, he um, gave me, a, a, allowed me to buy a house. But most of all, God allowed me to minister to my family. My daughter's in church. My daughters go to church. My grandkids go to church. Because when God puts it in you, I'm able to tell my kids, God, I walk on faith. Sometimes they want to see, like, Mom, how do you do it? And I said, it's him. It's the grace that he has given me to walk by faith. I'm telling you, if you are wavering in anything and you don't trust him, I'm going to stand before you and say, walk on his word. Everything in this Bible, now I can't quote a whole lot of scripture, but I can tell you this word is true. It does not come back void. I tell, I tell my kids, and Malachi says to prove me. And, they, and I said, what that means is he says you, his word does not come back void. You apply his word. God, you said. Right? My daughter is battling with, um, I don't know if we're on camera, but she's going to kill me if she hears this, that my daughter has a growth that she, she can barely walk. Right? 
we've been in and out. We've been in and out the hospital with getting biopsies. But guess what I say? By his stripes, she's healed. Why would I think anything less of the God that can do everything? I told her, baby, you go ahead and live. I'm going to go in there. But every time before we go, I get to anointing her and I get to praying over her before she go back. Now, I don't know what the, uh, what the biopsy is going to say, but I am going to trust God for that situation. Because I know that he is, Jeho I, I know that he's a healer of all things, Jehovah Rapha the God of healing. So I am trusting him on that. I have another daughter that's on drugs. I used to testify, and some of you guys know that I had a, um, I used to carry two little girls around with me. They were my grandchildren. I got one at birth, and I got one at five months, um, two weeks. And I raised those kids, but their mom was on drugs, and she got off of drugs. And every, I would get up and testify that I have a daughter on drugs, but I'm trusting God. God delivered her from drugs, and some things happened. Well, let me tell you, things happened, and she got back on. But do you think I'm not trusting God for the deliverance? I know that he is the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. He is not going, that situation ain't going to change. She might have an issue right now, but I am trusting that God will, will deliver her from that issue. Right? So the other scripture that I, I, I thought about as well is that it says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding and acknowledge him, acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. That's it. God, I know you in control. God, I know you can do it. I know, God, you're the author and the finisher. I know, God, you're a healer. I know, God, you're a lover. I know, God, to be everything. There's no question in my heart about who God is. Right? So, but I think about it. I think about it sometimes it's like, God, why do you have me in this? Why do you have me here? I'm not strong. Right? I'm not a strong person. People always say, you always look like you put together. And I said, mm, I don't think so, but God got me. That's who has me, that you see the person that you think put together. It's because the power of God who loves me holds me together. I am nothing. I cannot even walk today if it was not for God. I don't know where I would be today. Somebody told me you probably would have been in the penitentiary for putting your hands on people's stuff when you weren't supposed to. But God had a plan for me, right? God has a plan for each and every one of us. God wants to heal us. He wants to restore us. He wants to deliver us because that's what he wants for his people. Amen? So I don't have any more um, to go in, but I'm going to leave you with my last scripture. Um, let me see. What did I do? You know what? I'm sorry. That was my last scripture. But again, I'm going to say God is love. He loves each and every one of us. There's nothing too hard for God in our lives if we trust him. I, I trust him. I trust him in a time where I didn't know what to trust. God has never left. He has never left me nor for I. Testimony, I hadn't worked. I, my friend told me one time, she said, you say of a God who, is, who has favor over your life. And I said, and I thought, oh, my God, she's hating on me. But I had to reach back and say, I serve a God who ha I have favor over my life. Right? And I always feel like as long as I do the will of God with the help of God, then God will take care of me. In spite of where I am in my life, right? I'm going to close with this. If you don't know Lord, if you don't know the Lord and Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you don't trust him, I recommend you get a relationship with him on today. Love him like no other. Trust him like no other. You get in your car and you and you driving down the street. Do you trust your car to get you from A to B? 
Well, imagine God who gives you the car, who gets you the A to B through Z. So trust him in everything you do. Walk in his will with all your heart. Trust him with all your heart. Love on him with all your heart. Give your family to him with all your heart. Stand on his word with all your heart. Amen. Keep me in your prayer. Amen. 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 Let's say amen for Sister Minister Sandra. Amen. Talking about trusting in the Lord. Amen. Listen, listen. Um, we're not going to hold you this evening. We want to get the communion in and out of the way. Um, for those of you that would like to take communion, um, I just want you to just stand on your feet. Anyone who would like to take communion or have not taken it, have not taken it. Amen, amen. Amen, we just want to let the Lord have his way on this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the Bible says these words. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 11. And I'm going to start at verse 23, and I'm going to go to verse 26. For I have received of the Lord, that which I saw delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he had betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may take the body. Amen. After the same manner, also he took the cup, which he had sub saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, those of us that just have taken communion, Lord, we ask that you let the blood Wash us, Lord, Father God. Remove anything out of us that's not of you, Father God. Let your broken body and your precious blood just flow through us, Father God. We give you permission to make any change it needs to make in us, Lord God. We want to be more like you. We want to speak more like you, Father God. And we give you permission. We thank you for what you have done on the cross, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to partake of your precious body and your precious blood, Lord Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. 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 Well, I have about, give me about a good 15 minutes and we'll be up out of here. Amen. Amen. Listen, we enjoyed our speakers on this evening. Amen. Let's give them a good God bless you. <clears throat> Amen. I'm going to be real brief. I'm going to try to be, well, I'm going to try to be real brief. No, I'm going to be real brief. We're not going to be here too long. We're not going to be here too long. I want to come from Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Very familiar story. Very familiar story. Daniel chapter 3. We're going to, I want to discuss with you being picky about the company you keep. Being very picky about the company you keep. And I'm going to read verses 16, 17, and 18. And then I'm going to just go expound on it real quick. And then we go be up out of here. Amen. Amen. And it says, the Bible says these words, Daniel chapter 3, verses 16, 17, to 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. If not... Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. So, um, real quick, real quick, in verse, before I even get started on that, I like the part in verse 18 if it's, when it says this. If it, but if not, be it known unto thee that my God, O king, we will not serve thy gods and no worship. I like the part where it said, be it known unto thee. That's the part where you got to let some people know sometimes when they come to you with all kind of foolishness. Be it known unto thee. I ain't, I ain't do no, no. Be it known unto thee. I'll go ride with God. Be it known unto thee. That's, that's kind of a Bible. In other words, what I'm trying to say is in case you didn't know, I'm going to flow with God. I'm going to follow God's commandments. Amen. So real quick, real quick about this story. Um, I want you to know this, this story is, um, is this chapter right here is about um, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to scan through this. There's so much in this text. There's so much in this text here. I want you to know that each section in this chapter it's kind of broke down verses 1 through 15. You're going to see the decree, the decree, the decree. And then verses 16 through 18, you discover the decision. The decree is the king makes a decree because he, he, King Nebuchadnezzar makes a new law that the boys, new law for these, for these three boys. That's the decree. Then in verse 16 through 18, you discover the decision. So in verses 1 through 15, there's a command that's, that's for them to do. In verses 16 through 18, the command requires a decision. And then in verses 19 through 30, you notice the deliverance from the young boys. You notice the deliverance from the young men. And let me show you all three. I'm going to show you all three. And I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to just show you the decree because... Um, he tells them in 10 words what the decree is. If you don't know what the decree is, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you in 10 words, there is a statue, okay? When you hear the music, bow down. That's basically the decree in a nutshell. That's basically the decree. When there's a statue, 10 words. There's a statue. When you hear the decree, bow down. And the boy answers his 10 words with two words, we ain't. We ain't. That's what they said. We ain't, we, 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 we not going to do that. And then it was consequences. Now, the consequences was that they was going to be thrown into fiery furnace. And in verses 19 through 30, you will see how God delivered these young men from the fiery furnace. And they did it together. The reason why I, I like the company, I titled it The Company You Keep, because they all did it together. All decisions they made, they was all on one accord. And you got to be careful when you are riding, when you are trying to roll with God and do the things God tell you to do, and you get people in your circle that's pulling you away and trying not to agree with what God has told you to do, as if God have to check with them to bless you. But you see, God doesn't check with anybody. Matter of fact, he don't even check with you first. He checks your spirit first. And many times he doesn't, he, he doesn't bless you according to the first thing he checks. Let me, let me be clear. The first thing God checks is your faith. The first thing he checks is your faith. Do you have the faith to believe what God is telling you to do? Do you have the faith to go where God is telling you to go? And these three young men all had faith to go where God was, was sending them. Because I guarantee you somebody, somebody in here right now, God is telling you to do something, and God is telling you something that, that, that somebody can talk you out of, that somebody can really talk you out of. You see, the first thing you got to look for when you're seeking good company is people that is confident in the Lord. People that is confident in the Lord People that is confident in the Lord. And what I like about these three boys is all three of them was confident in the Lord. And number two, number two, seek people who are content with the Lord. You got to seek people who are content with the Lord. And all of it means when I say content is I'm okay with God. See, many people get content means I've got to be okay with the situation. You don't have to be okay with the situation you're in, but you need to be okay with God. 
You need to be okay. You cannot, you, number one, you got to notice that they say, as, as Henry would say, your arms are too short to box with God anyway. So you might as well be content with God, even though you're not content in the situation. Why? Because God is the one who can change the situation if you have faith and believe that he can change it. So people that is content, content with the Lord, content with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then you ought to be, um, you ought to seek company with people who are contained by the Lord. Contained by the Lord. Now, I don't use the word contained a lot, but contained basically means kept. People who are kept by the Lord. If people who are kept by the Lord, over time, over time, you'll see that they have been kept by the Lord by going through situations and situations they've been through, and they still ride with God. They still haven't turned their face, their face against the Lord. They still saying, what a Savior. They still come to church. They still come to Bible study. They still, they are contained by the Lord. Amen. And many of us ought to realize that the devils that have come into your life, many of you ought to realize the reason that you're here right now is because you have been contained by the Lord. What does it mean to be contained, to be kept? The reason why you're here is because he contained you when you was in the hospital. He contained you when you was lost. He contained you when you was broke, busted, disgusted, didn't know where to go, didn't know which way to turn, back against the wall, wall against the back. God contained he contained us. He contained us. Now, look, these three boys in Babylon, they're not from Babylon. They're from Jerusalem, but they're in Babylon. Now, I want to suggest to you that when you read this, don't just start in chapter 3. Don't just start in chapter 3. You got to start in chapter 1. Start in chapter 1 because in chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, you see the devil's strategic plan against these young men. See, the enemy can be very strategic against you. He can be very strategic against you. You see, in uh, chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, he began to change some things. Now, look, look what he said. He said, when I get them, I'm going to change them. And look for, the th look, look for the things he changed. Number one, the first thing he changed was their language, what they were speaking, what they were speaking. And then he changed their literature, which is what they were reading. And it matters because many of us have to realize that what you read often determines what you speak. What you're reading often determines what you speak. That's why he said to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians because they wanted them to speak like them. And this is why you got to get around people they get around people who can handle your best you because if they can't handle your best you, then they're going to turn you over to, you're going to have to keep dummying yourself down to have a conversation with them and dummy yourself down to have a relationship and you trying to fit in with somebody who doesn't even, who's not even on your spiritual level. And now you're wondering why every time you talk to them that the conversation goes sideways, you don't never feel like you left the conversation with no growth because they're, they're, they're not on your level. And what they're doing is they're, they're stripping you down from your, your level that God has you on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because um, so he changes their language, and then he changes their, their literature. And I want you to know that God is a God who will not only put you in a place to where you can see He's putting you in a place right now, I believe, where we can see the enemy works. We can see the enemy. You should not be saved as long as you save that you cannot see the enemy attacking you. You cannot see the enemy um, um, coming at you. You got to know when he's coming at you. You got to, we, we become the house of Highland. Listen, I often tell people, if you're in the house of Highland and you're not growing, you're just not paying attention. Because in this house, the word goes forth enough for us to know the enemy schemes, enough for us to know the enemy scams. And when he comes against you, we ought to have something to fight him back with. Ain't you tired of getting black eyes from the devil? Don't you ready to give him a black eye? Ain't you ready to give him a left uppercut? Ain't you ready to give him a right cross? And then he changes their lifestyle. He changes their lifestyle because um, and the lifestyle was their diet. Their diet he changes. Now and then he changes their labor. But watch this. 
Watch this. He changed their label. He changed their lifestyle. He changed their language. He changed their literature. But he couldn't change their loyalty. And you got to know that as I be a child of God, God got you my back. God, you can change. You can call me. A, you can change my name. You can change what I'm reading. You can change everything about but you can't change my loyalty from God. You cannot change my loyalty. Don't let nobody change your loyalty from God. Don't let no clique want to be that. You want to be down with that bad. Don't let no person you want to be down with that bad make you change your loyalty from God. And, and in chapter 3, these young men makes a decision, and their decision is this. We not go bend, we not go break, and we not go bow. And while we're not bending, and we're not breaking, and we're not bow, bowing, let me tell you this point, we not go burn. Amen. Amen. Now, would you stop thinking that every little time comes, every little thing comes in your life, it's coming to break you, it's coming to burn you, it's coming to tear you down. Listen, everything that comes in your life, if it doesn't go your way, it could be a growing period. Look at it as a learning period. Stop looking at everything so negative and it's always the devil, it's always the devil. Listen, God put things in our path to make you strong. I'm telling y'all, we live in a day and time where we want God to always do something for us, but we don't want him to do nothing to us. And God's like, sometimes I have to put you, I have to put you through something to let you know that I'm still with you, to let you know that I'm still God to let you know, listen, if you ain't been through nothing, you only know him from what, from what people say about him, but God will put you in the situation to where you know him for yourself, to where you know him for yourself. Like Job said, I now see him with a different set of eyes because I know what I've been through and I know what he has brought me out of. I'll be done in about six more minutes. I'll be done in about six more minutes. So, so these young men, he takes them. He throws them in a fairy furnace. He takes them and throws them in a fairy furnace. But he made one mistake. He made one mistake. He asked them a question. He said, then what God will be able to rescue you? Then what God will be able to rescue you? It's one thing to talk against me, but it's another thing to talk against God because that's the reason why God showed up because they spoke against God himself. Whenever you listen, Jesus, when he was in that, when he was in the, um, um, you know the story, when he was out in the wilderness and he had that, that, that conversation with the devil and the devil asked him the three questions, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, and, and he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And um, well, I'm here to let you know right now, when somebody is, is tempting God and trying to use you and your situation to tempt God, don't you know God will show up on your behalf even no more because you standing strong on his word, you standing strong on his faith. It's not you on trial, it's God that's on trial. And God is going to show up and show out every single time because he wants to get the glory out of your life. As Bishop said this morning, God wants to get the glory. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to fret, you don't have to cry because God is going to use you to get the glory. Amen. Amen. Why would we want to serve God? I often tell my, uh, my family members and my children, listen, listen, God's going to get the glory. You're going to get the victory. You're going to get the victory. So I trade him the glory. I'll be more than happy to give him the glory if God will give me the victory. He can have the glory to himself. I, hey, I'm satisfied with the victory. I don't need the glory. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. And I'm going to tell you something. And then they, the, he, he goes down there and he says, oh, I didn't even, I didn't get off. I was supposed to be on content. That was the, um, that was the, the first one. The first one being confident. They was confident. And here's the content. I'm just, I'm just branching through this. Here's the content, content. Verse 18, they said, even if he doesn't, because many of us will only serve the God that do. But they said, even if he doesn't, he's still able. He's still able. 
And you got to be so content with your God that you know that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly and, and all that you think, all that you ask him. He gotta, you got to know that he's a God that, that will con- exceed your expectations. He'll bring you out. He ain't going to put you through it. If your faith got you into it, he'll give you the faith to get you out of it. Amen, somebody? Amen. And then, then, then the last one, the last one was um, it was confident. It was content and it was contained. It was contained. And the, what they said was contained, the containment was if he don't bring us out, he's able to bring us out. He's able to bring us out. Oh, uh, where's the containment at? I don't know. I, I don't know, but I know the story. I know the story. He said, he said, he, if he don't bring us out, you know what? He says, if he don't, if he don't be it known unto thee that we will not serve thy gods. That's it. We will not. So even if even if he don't bring you out, even if he doesn't bring you out, don't lose faith in him. Don't lose faith in him. Don't even if he doesn't make a way for you, don't lose faith in him. That just means that your ways is not his ways. He's gonna bring you out. He just ain't gonna bring you out the way you think he's gonna bring you out. And because he think we think he don't bring us out the way we think he's gonna bring us out, we think it's not gonna be done. But the devil is a liar. You gotta know that my God gonna bring me out one way or the other way. One way or the other. I'm content with who he is. I'm content with what he can do. I'm content with the Lord I serve, the God I serve, and I'm content with knowing the fact that I'm not going to be here long. I'm only going to be here for a short amount of time. Why? Because I know the Lord I serve is going to bring me out. Why? Because I know the God I serve ain't going to leave me here that long. Why? Because the God I serve is knowing that um, that, that he loves me enough that he's not going to leave me in the same place. We got to know this. You got to know this. Another thing you got to know is you got to know how to stand. You got to know how to stand. You got to know how to stand. When tough situations come, say to yourself, I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to break. I'm not going to bow. And I'm not going to burn. You're not going to bend. You're not going to break. You're not going to bow. I ain't talking about literally bending. I ain't talking about literally breaking. I ain't talking about literally bowing. I'm talking about giving in to the situation and walking away from God. I'm talking about giving into the situation and walking away from God. You got to know that no matter what, I'm going to stand on God. I'm going to stand on God. I'm going to stand on God's word. I'm going to stand on his faith. I'm going to stand on his power. I'm going to stand on his anointing. Hello, somebody. I'm going to stand on everything he has put inside me. Amen. We got to be like these three boys. We got to be like these three boys. We have to be confident in our Lord. Amen. We got to be content with who he is. Hello, somebody. Amen. I'm done. I just wanted to tell y'all that. I just want to tell y'all that. To be confident in the Lord. That's the main one. That's the big one. That's the big one. That's the big one. That's the big one. Because if you don't have confidence, you won't be able to be content in him. You won't be able to be content in who he is. I'm not talking about content in the situation again. I'm talking about content with who he is. As if I'm so content with you, Lord, that if you don't do nothing for me, you've already done enough. I'm so content with you, Lord, that if I don't get the house, if I don't get the car, I'm content with who you is. You still my Lord and Savior. You still my everything. You still my all in all. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Everyone standing, everyone standing. If you're in the house, stand, stand. Stand on your feet, stand on your feet. I want you to have the confidence in the Lord. When you walk out these doors, know for a fact that whatever come your way, God go bring me out. You know for a fact, whatever, whatever come my way, God is not going to leave me here. Amen, somebody. If you don't need this now, you're going to need this Tuesday. You're going to need this come Wednesday. When that thing comes, when that mail comes, when you open that mail or get that phone call, you're going to have to have confidence in the Lord. This is what Elder Puddle was talking about. Lord, I need that confidence in you. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. 
We thank you for every word that we heard on tonight, Lord. We thank you for every person, every minister that spoke on tonight, God. We ask you, Lord, right now, God, to increase us in you, Lord, Father God. Increase your anointing in us, God. Increase your word in us, Lord. Increase our study in it, Lord. Jesus, we're asking for increase on tonight. We're asking to know you more. We're asking to believe you more. We're asking for a faith increase, Lord God. Someone's faith is going to be challenged. Someone's faith is in a challenge right now. Lord, we ask you to increase that faith, Lord. Don't let them fall by the wayside, God. Keep them, Lord Father God. Keep them in the name of Jesus. We trust you, Lord. We trust you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands if you trust the Lord this evening. Amen, amen. Come on, come on. Praise him if you're going to trust him when the situation comes. Praise him if you're going to trust him when a, when, a, when a doctor say something. Praise him if you're going to trust him. I'm going to trust the Lord. Amen, amen. Don't you want your own testimony? Don't you want your own testimony? Don't you want to say the Lord did it for me because I believed. He did it for me because I had faith. He did it for me because I didn't waver. And he did it for me. God will do it for you. If you have that confidence and you be content with who he is. Amen. 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 You may be dismissed on tonight. I believe that um, we have said our prayer. I believe we have heard from the Lord on this evening. Amen. We thank God for Minister Sandra. Amen. Minister Darius. Amen. Amen. Before we leave, say amen for Bishop Miniweather. Amen. And First Lady Miniweather. Amen. Amen. Those of you that would like to drop an offering in on your way out, the deacon is coming with the basket. Amen. I'm going to just pray and pray over the offering right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every person that drops in the offering, every person that gives, Lord God. This is good ground. This is good seed, Lord Father God. And we ask you to bless the giver and the receiver in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And you are dismissed. Do me a favor. Say something nice to somebody on your way out. Amen.